Install Kali Linux in VirtualBox. Kali Linux is a rewrite of Backtrack, a penetration testing Linux distro. A penetration test is an attempt to find the security weaknesses in a computer system. Kali Linux comes with a collection of forensics and security tools wrapped in one package and is designed to assist security experts in discovering exploits. One of the viewers on this channel asked how to install Backtrack in VirtualBox, but because Backtrack is no longer maintained, I went with Kali Linux. Outcomes for this video would be to configure VirtualBox for Kali Linux guest, downloading Kali Linux is not covered, install a 64-bit Kali Linux, update and upgrade Kali Linux, and install DKMS, dynamic kernel module support for VirtualBox, and install VirtualBox guest editions. Requirements would be a downloaded Kali Linux.iso file, VirtualBox installed on the host computer, an internet connection, and enough additional RAM, random access memory, to run both host and Kali Linux, about 512 megabytes, but you can do it with 256 megabytes if that's all you have. Additional info, there's a Kali Linux site, DistroWatch, Offensive Security. These are the people that rewrote Kali Linux, and they've got some classes here, and Backtrack on Wikipedia. There's also a Backtrack site, but I found the information there to be out of date and not accurate. Disclaimer, while I've researched this material, I can't fully verify it'll work with all combinations of hardware and software out there, so I've been asked to include a disclaimer. If you wish, you can stop the video and read the disclaimer. Here's the Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. And what I'm going to do is create a guest machine that will run Kali Linux. Click on New, top left corner. Call this Kali Linux 01. And right here it gives it some default version. But there's one thing that you need to do here is scroll down a little bit and go get the 64-bit version because I'm installing a 64-bit version of Kali Linux. Click Next. And default memory is 256 megabytes. I'm going to double that to 512. Click OK. I think you can run Kali Linux with 256 megabytes. But since I'm using a 64-bit version and I've got enough RAM. I just go up to 512. And the recommended size of the hard drive is 8 gigabytes. I'm going to click create a virtual hard drive now. And I'm going to add a little more to that. Create and then VDI, virtual box disk image. That's the default for setting I'm going to use. Click next. And dynamically allocated. Basically a dynamically allocated hard drive file will only use space on your physical hard drive as it fills up to a maximum fixed size. And a fixed size hard drive may take long credence in some systems, but is often faster to use. The other thing with a fixed size hard drive is once it's created, if it says 8 gigabytes, you'll have a whole 8 gigabyte chunk of your host hard drive taken out and dedicated to your virtual machine. Whereas a dynamically allocated will only use as much as the files that are on the guest machine up to the 8 gigabyte setting. I'm going to choose dynamically allocate and click next. And here I generally start off with about 20 gigabytes for my virtual machines. It's just my uh, choice here. Create. Now there's some settings that you're going to have to do here. One on system is go to processor and enable PAE NX. That's instruction set. All the uh, directions with Kali Linux seem to say that this should be enabled on a virtual machine. I'm going along with that, even though I haven't really researched this issue fully, but everybody seems to be going that way. I'm going to click OK here. In storage, I click on empty for the IDE controller, and then I'm going to pick a file. This is where Kali Linux is downloaded on my computer, or Windows 7 computer. Local Disk C, Downloads, and Kali Linux, and just simply select it. With this ISO file, I can go ahead and install Kali Linux directly from the ISO file. Click OK. And that's pretty much it for creating a virtual guest. Here's the 
Kali Linux 01 virtual guest powered off so let's go ahead and start it up right click start now you've got a number of different install options here you've got some live install and basically I'm going to choose just regular install. Graphical install will allow you to install using your mouse and then install as speech synthesis is a uh, text-based install but it's got all the defaults listed so it's it's not that hard to do either but I'm just going to take the basic install click enter in my case default shows up English I'm going to click yes to that or just go and click enter and then country ter United States which is where I'm at you may have to make some choices there and American English we'll hit enter and that's for the keyboard and I'm gonna let it go on trundle anytime there's a screen where you have to make a decision I'll bring that screen up and ask for a host name in my case I'm gonna just use the same name I used for the virtual guests Kali Linux 01 and then hit enter Domain name, Kali Linux 01.private.edu. You can make up your own. Though I probably should just leave off this uh, computer name. Once I have domain name, hit continue. Root password. If you don't give it a root password here. Uh, the root password will be root spell backwards or Tor. And you'll be able to use sudo. So I'll give it the root password. So in my case, I'll be using root. Select my time zone, Eastern United States. And let it go. I usually use the LVM logical volume manager but in this case I'm just going to use the default use entire disk all files in one partition I just I prefer it that way and just hit enter again finishing partitioning and writing changes to disk and now here's where you're going to have to go tab over to yes write the changes to disk and hit enter. Come back at the next screen where we have to make a decision, where I have to make a decision. It's been about 20 minutes since I started the install. Up comes a question, a network mirror can be used to supplement the software as included on the CD-ROM. Use a network mirror. I'm going to click, take the default and say, click yes. And HTTP proxy information I'm going to leave it empty and click enter. And it downloads some file from the network mirror. Ask the question, should you install the Grub bootloader on the hard disk? Actually to the master boot record. I'm going to click yes. If you click no, it'll ask you where you want it installed. Finally, it says, finish the installation. Basically, remove the uh, CD-ROM if you've got one. So I'm going to click, and it's been about 23 minutes now, so I'm going to click Continue. And it looks like it's restarting. So upcoming the startup screen. Here's Kali Linux after uh, the restart. Ready to log on. Username is going to be root. log in password that I created so before I uh, install uh, VirtualBox guest edition I'm going to do an update and upgrade so go over here to accessories pull up a terminal and I'm going to do it oops sorry forget that sudo stuff I'm not with Ubuntu anymore it's apt get update and that gets me all my update files and 
this is a second line apt get you can do these on separate lines dash y upgrade and you can do these on three lines and apt get dash y and the dash y is simply so you won't have to uh, hit the uh, y uh, or you know and ask you want to install it and I'm going to install DKMS this is a module that works with uh, VirtualBox so if you upgrade the kernel the VirtualBox guest editions won't have to be reinstalled and also makes everything run smoother with the VirtualBox guest editions I've found. Make sure everything's spelled correctly because if you do if everything's spelled correctly and everything works get to get up and get a cup of coffee and come back in about 15 minutes or half an hour. Here all the updates have been installed and DKMS module has been installed. So now I'm going to basically power it off. Here's Kali Linux so one and I'm going to go over to storage. Make sure that I have host drive E is empty click OK. That makes it easy to install VirtualBox guest editions. Then go ahead, I'm going to restart it. Start. Here's a login screen. Password. Okay, once the applications menu comes up, Go to Devices, and I'm going to insert Guest Edition CD Image. And up comes a question. This medium contains software intended to be automatically started. Would you like to run it? And I'll just click on Run. Error Auto Running Software. Cannot find the Auto Run program. So let's just click OK. Pull up a terminal. Accessories, Terminal, and I'm going to go to CD Media, do an LS, CD-ROM, and CD-ROM 0. So let's go in CD, CD, ROM 0, do an LS, and there we have it. This is what's in the VirtualBox Guest Edition CD. So I want to run the program. VBox Linux Editions dot run. The way I run a program when I'm right here in directory is with the dot and the forward slash. Permission denied. Well, that didn't work right as I planned. So I'm going to go to CP V box Linux additions dot run. Whoops, spell that correctly. To root CD root do an ls and change mod 755 v box linux editions dot run do an ls l now i'll run it and so now it'll work So now VirtualBox Guest Editions is installed. So I'm going to do a reboot. And when it comes up, I think you'll notice that the screen will be uh, enlarged. OK, so let's log in. Password. OK, so now it fills the full screen. I'll be the first to say that I, I'm not familiar with 
penetration testing. I'm not familiar with Kali Linux, but since the viewer wanted me to demonstrate how to install it in VirtualBox, that's what I've done because I am very familiar with VirtualBox. Anyway, thank you.